All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're going to get our scope of work for a machine inside of Easy PLC's machine simulator. So this is a, a machine simulation software that you can actually program yourself, but first you need to understand how to get the scope of work. All right, so um, I have it running in demo mode right now, and that way we can tell exactly how the program it, or the machine is designed to run. And that way we can, when we program it, we can understand it's supposed to do this exact function, right? Its design function is what, what is actually happening right now. And this is the most reliable thing we can do. So first, I like to take it out of the actual machine or the demo mode. So I'll exit the demo mode so that now I know how it's supposed to work, right? And then what I'll do is I'll go back to my machines and I'll go down to that very machine that I actually picked and I'll hit the start button on this one. Now this is gonna give me the instance where I can actually go in and see the tags that are used so that I know what I, I need to tie into my OPC topic of RS links. Uh, so when I come over here, I can view the IO, okay? Now this does have a start, stop, push button so you can easily see where those stop buttons are. You can see the stop on, you can see the E stop button. So this does have a start, stop, but uh, push button station. So we do need to make sure we write our tags in. And the cool thing about this is we can get our tags uh, from the digital outputs. We can get all of our outputs over here. We can get all of our inputs over here. Now, not all inputs are gonna be used though. Just keep that in mind. Uh, so this is why we're going to actually manually start this process ourselves. Now I've taken the liberty of going ahead and, and writing the tags, how I see that they, they work. Uh, again, that's based upon that demo. So what I did is I said, okay, my outputs that, and these are gonna be my actual tag names that I'm going to put inside of my PLC program. Now, the tag names that you put right here do not have to match the tag names on the actual IO inside of Easy PLC's machine simulator. Where you make that transition and you tie that and make that, that conduit so that they, can, they have good conductivity to, to talk, is through your OPC topic. So we'll do that later. We won't do that right now, but we wanna name the actual tag something that it corresponds to what we're doing. So we need to understand that. So what I did is I named each tag and then I gave it a brief description about what it, what does it do, right? It, for anything that would be something that maybe would escape my, my memory, uh, some things like ro uh, robot load, robot unload, those are pretty obvious, right? So the, it kind of gives you the description inside the name. Uh, but for this right here, like the empty uh, empty box creator, you know, run thin conveyor doesn't necessarily tell me that that's gonna to, to do that task. So I need to have some kind of like subset to say, okay, here's my tag that I'm gonna be using, but here's the function it's gonna do too. And how do I know this, right? So um, it's easy to come in here and once you're in this state and you have your view and your IO, just keep in mind, you can actually start the system. So what we're gonna do, and I'll first, I'm gonna pop out my cylinder right here. And you can see my cylinder pop came out and it also transitioned this from advanced to, or from back to, to advanced. If you watch that, that input. So it has a read switch on that actual cylinder. So we can understand that it is actually something that's going to be doing the whole back of that box when it comes in. So let's run the thin conveyor and we're gonna move in a box right now. So we're understanding again, now we're moving in a box. And what do we need to do at that point in time? When the box hits photo I3, see photo I3 came on, now we want to square the box. So if we look right here, I can tell what squares the box, right? So squaring the box right here would be what I'm, I'm saying is that input. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come over here and it say the pneumatic pusher to advance. And you can see that squares that box. So now that we have our box in position, our empty box, we have our box being held back, the conveyor's not running, the, it's in position, it's being held. What we wanna do is we wanna start our packages coming into the system. And we do that by this work creator, right? So our packages are coming in the system 
And I'm going to stop them where photo I1 is just so you can see that that does make photo I1. So this is where you can put in little notes to say for yourself on the inputs, this is the first photo I or PE at the robot in feed. This is the second one. And this is going to be the empty box. This is things that I do to kind of speed up the process of getting my scope to work, scope of work. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and load the first uh, package inside of there. So we have our first package inside of the robot now. So we need to index our robot down. So we'll go down and load to the very next position. And then we'll come over here, get another layer. We'll, we'll then do that again. Come over here and get another layer. Okay, so then now we're on layer three. Okay, so we're, we've transitioned and we're just this digital output to say, hey, move the robot to, to the very next one. And then we want to go to four. At this point in time, right here, we can easily see that four is our last position. So we can load that in. And then what we want to do is we want to close the gripper. Because if we go to load the box right now, it's gonna it's not gonna be holding the packages, right? So we want to close the gripper of the robot. Okay, so as we and we're gonna keep that closed as the robot turns so that it when it goes to upright, it won't, won't actually drop it until we actually open that rob um, the actual gripper itself on the robot. So we're gonna go to the unload position. We'll go to unload position. And then our very next thing we want to do is open our gripper. So we open our gripper and the, the packages that we loaded, and we're, we're learning this step by step, right? We're doing the same function. So now we can understand and write down what these things do on our notepad. So that, that's this is how I get my inputs and outputs, and this is how I get what the inputs and outputs do so that when I'm programming it, I can kind of streamline that process and make that really quick and easy for me. So now that we have the robot down and we have basically the packages inside the box, what we want to do is home the robot to get it back up. Now we can actually release our pneumatics and then we can turn the thin conveyor on again. Now as soon as the robot or as soon as the package passes the actual cylinder, I like to throw the cylinder back out. So we'll throw the main cylinder back out and then we'll come in and bring our box back in, our empty, our, our next empty, empty box. We'll turn it off, we'll go ahead and square our box up, and then we can start getting our next layer. Or we can start getting our next, uh, you know, transition our, our stuff into the, you know, just like we did before. And we'll go down to the very next one, do this real quick. Third, okay, fourth. And then our very last one right here. And then we close the gripper, close the gripper. And then as we close the gripper, what we wanna do is we want to go to the load position. So we go to actually not load position, we wanna go to unload. So we, we actually can make mistakes in here. And this is where we learn how to do things. So just keep in mind, we want to make sure our program is design, designed to actually do what the function is. So we want to uh, we want to open the gripper right now, and then we want to take the robot home, and then undo the cylinders, and then go ahead and run that thin conveyor again, and then pop our cylinder back out. And you can see now we have a base understanding of how the process should work. So with that said, we have our scope of work, we have our tags we understand the way it works and we have our description so that as we're programming it, we know what that function is, that tag should do. And then from that point on, we can build our program, load our program, and then start actually testing and seeing how it works, right? So with that said, hopefully you learned a lot from that video and how to get your scope of work using Easy PLC's machine simulator or any machine for that matter. Just go ahead and get your scope of work before you do anything. This will save you a light years of time when you're going and programming. Instead of just going in and, and trying to just wing it and program it, get your, get your information first. Do your due diligence, get your information, and then that way when you start building your program, you can build it with a confidence that it will work as designed. Uh, but also, 
double check and do your testing afterwards to make sure it does what it's supposed to be doing. So with that said, hopefully you learned a lot from that video. We'll see you guys on the next one.